This week on the show, we bring you JK Industries, Harsh Pati Singhania. It's a great game because A, you can play with people of different levels of skill right. because of the handicap system. The second is that you are always challenging yourself. In golfing news, Yani Seng wins Women's British Open. And last but not the least, golfing tips with Chasjeet Singh. Today's tip is going to be on chipping. On Tea Time this week gives me great pleasure to introduce Harshpati Singhania. Thank you very much and you're welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to pleasure. catch up with you in Delhi. I know we're managing to get away from this monsoon in some way, but... Uh, well, in a way, you're providing me some sense of relief being away from the office for a while. <laughs> you know, there's always that big question or debate. Do you want to get away from office to play golf or get away from golf to work? Which one works for you? Well, you know, I think the, f- uh, the first one, to get away from <laughs> office to play golf. Although I must confess I don't do that. Uh, it's, it's you don't want your employees to be hearing this, do you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, actually, I play on the weekends. So that pretty much works out all right. What was golf like in the family? Uh, your dad plays, right? Yeah, my father plays. Actually, we used to live in Calcutta, so I used to go with my dad, uh, walk down with him to the Royal, Cor- Royal Go- Calcutta Golf Course, and then um, I used to just walk with him. And then one day he said that, why are you just walking? Why don't you go and hit a few balls, and I'll set up the coach for you. Yeah. So I started that, and I started playing as a teenager. Then I got my own four ball. Some kids, we used to play in Cal at the RCGC. It's almost like saying, you know, when in Calcutta, must play golf. They, yeah, they, it was, sort of goes together. Yeah, and then, you know, the, but the funny part is, I think around the time when I went to college or something, uh, or school, I just stopped playing. And I didn't play for 20 years or 25 years. Wow, and where was this? Where did you go to college? No, I mean, it was in Calcutta. But then somehow it just got off, and then I went to the States and got involved in business. And when I came back also, it's much later when I moved to Delhi. And I think I restarted playing in the last, what, seven, eight years Wow. 10 years, but I, there was a big hiatus for about 20 years. I know. You're, you're almost being true to what has been quite a criticism for golf. It's, uh, it's only taken up once you've settled in business, <laughs> not taken up while you're aggressive at it. But tell me, uh, was it a given that you had to join family business uh, from your own mindset? Yeah, from my own mindset, yes. Because that's what I've always... It was not that everybody said that you've got to join the family business, but that was just the natural thing to do. And uh, willy-nilly, whether you like it or not, you grow up in a business family. Even though we didn't talk much business around the dining table, but you still imbibe some things and you some conversations. You didn't talk that much business on the dining table? No, we didn't. hard to believe that. You know, it was, it was interesting because I think my family, somehow uh, earlier my grandfather and then my father and uncles and everybody, uh, chose to largely think that when they were home, business was away. But you can't do a 100% divide. Inevitably, it gets mixed up to some extent. But I guess in today's world, you can never do that, right? Because a large number of people carry a whole lot of work back home. Yeah, and then you have those little devices, right? Which keep uh, (laughs) sending you emails all the time. Didn't happen in those days. No excuses Uh, whatsoever. From golf and golfing holidays to what is really by the book, which is the business, how is it all shaping up for you? And you know, which of these businesses do you think is going to be the story of the next decade? Well, you know, we are a diverse group. We have many businesses, uh, but most of our businesses concentrate on manufacturing. So we have paper, we have cement, tires, and uh, we have a bunch of agribusinesses, etc. Actually, you know, truthfully, I think all of these businesses are very good because the way... India is developing and the point at which we are, these are all basic sort of businesses, basic building blocks for building any economy. So we are very positive and bullish on each of these businesses. And we are concentrating a lot on on being in these businesses. Have you got um, frustrated with the supply issues, supply cycle issues? There's always that debate and I know, know you're often discussing it with all of us as well. 
whether the supply side issues will get sorted out and therefore will manufacturing boom like the way we always dream of it too. Well, it's interesting because just two days ago I was uh, at a meeting with the minister and we were talking about, you know, the whole plan of the national manufacturing policy, which is being, uh, which is a draft policy and also the plan to take manufacturing from 16% to 25% of GDP by 2020. But it requires a lot of stuff. I think the big issues are right now and which remain are in terms of our credit policy and interest rates. I know we are fighting inflation uh, and, uh, you know, tightening monetary policy. But the fundamental issue remains you require a stable interest rate environment for investments to come. True. So do you think though, I mean, would you admit that the government and RBI don't have a choice, but industry still is getting pained? Yeah, I think the RBI and the government don't have that much of a choice. But at the same time, I think they must also realize, at least in my opinion, that by increasing interest rates, you're not going to be able to tame inflation because a lot of our inflation is imported. Are they going overboard, do you think? I don't think they have got overboard as yet, but I think um, we need to now put a, press the pause button and say, okay, this is fine. So everything adjusts to this, you know, sort of rate environment. But, but tell me, as an industrialist, do you feel that, you know, um, when there is growth in an economy like ours, inflation should be a byproduct and we should start living with it. Do you then blame that on politics, the reason why inflation control has become a bigger story than growth? I don't think the issue is... Um, the trouble with inflation. I think the trouble is we need to have an environment for growth which is more stable. Now look at agri-inflation. Agri-inflation is not the issue in my opinion about a good monsoon or a bad monsoon. It's just that we are not producing enough uh, looking at the increase in population as well as the change in lifestyles of people where people want better, more fruits and vegetables and milk and better quality of this. So we need to raise agricultural productivity otherwise this is becoming endemic in our in our system. So I think what we need is a little more broader term vision in terms of stability of policies. Well, okay. So we'll talk about that policy paralysis, but we'll go from macro into micro and talk about his businesses that's ahead. All right. No, it's not oh, a bad fine. shot with a good outcome. Yeah, exactly. Set yourself up for a nice chip. What we need is better governance. And more than better governance, I think more decisive governance. I think we have plenty of good policies. The intentions, the policy papers, they can always be tweaked a bit. And in a country like India, there will always be more in the coming. But they need to be implemented.